Hey everyone, and welcome back to the X-Ring. I know I've been doing a lot of long range, but uh, I do want to review a pistol that was given to me by a friend. Uh, he actually is a custom pistol maker, builder, stippler. Uh, does a lot of really cool work, and he presented this to me as a gift. And it is by Wayne Hammer. Wayne Hammer was based out of California. He uh, worked for MLS Customs. One of the best stipplers I know, guys. I mean, look at the stipple work on this. Uh, the way he does his borders, especially right here with the magazine release, uh, even the magazine release is stippled. The little inset cut right here for the stippling. And guys, I'm not normally into Gucci Glocks because something like this, if you're carrying it up against your stomach or bare skin, it will kind of wear you out. But uh, there's his logo right there. You guys can see the hammers. And then, uh, you know, the slide, it is Cerakoted black. Everything was done by Wayne. Uh, this slide he actually had machined by someone else, but I like the way that it's lightened. It has the forward um, serrations on here, even has some uh, serrations up top. Not that I would use that. I'm not a big fan of opposed, or uh, I'm not a big fan of open slides because typically that will let more stuff get into the recoil spring area and everything else, but it does have the suppressor height sights, height sights, and it has the Trigicon, the RMR. The fit of this RMR into this slide is incredible. Uh, it would stay in here if you didn't have the screws in here. You literally have to press it down at the exact same time. And if you try to can it at all, it just locks in there. Uh, it does have a modified Zev trigger and it's a curved trigger. I have not shot this pistol. You can see the undercut here and suppressor height sights. And uh, it does have the Trigicon in the rear. It needs a Trigicon up front. He did tell me about that beforehand, but like I said, awesome, awesome gift. Initially, he wanted me to torture test this and compare it side by side to a Glock 17, but it's really hard for me to bring myself to do that to such a nice pistol that's gifted to me. Uh, you guys can see some of the bubble work here on the back of the slide. It's just, man, it's just awesome. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot it at, we are at 20 yards. I'll just shoot it on the man paper over there. We'll have video down range, you know, nothing crazy. I'll shoot some plates with it and then maybe we'll take some shots at 50 and 100 yards or so. But I'm excited to get this big shout out to Wayne Hammer for sending this to me. Like I said, it's not for evaluation, it was a gift and I'm very appreciative of that. Thanks, Wayne. All right, so guys, I get a lot of people ask me what kind of holster setup I run. Now, whether it's for competition or if it's a, you know, ruck match or anything like that, I'm always running a G-Code. G-Code makes some excellent stuff. This does have an inner belt. But what's nice about it is you have these two squeeze tabs here. I can squeeze that. That pushes this forwards. That unlocks this. I've never had this inadvertently unlocked because, remember, you have to squeeze those two tabs. They're not going to go in by themselves. This was for a Glock 17, I believe, or Glock 19, and what I did was, yeah, it's kind of a hack job, but I modified it so I could get the RMR in here, especially when I did the Burris, because the, for the or excuse me, the uh, Bushnell Elite, because I had the 34, had the RMR, so I had to have a holster. But the way that it works is you have positive retention. You just push on that with the thumb, and it drops the hood over. So this wouldn't be for something like duty use or everyday carry, but for competitions, anything like that, it's extremely fast. Uh, I will show you how quick it is. I mean, it's that fast and you've got it, but you don't have to worry about this ever coming out unless you push that button. You have to push it, but it's more of a natural movement, just pushing down, establishing that master grip, clearing, pressing. Still a little uh, indifferent about the RMRs. If you are gonna run an RMR or a dot on your pistol, make sure you have iron sights that co-witness. I'm gonna let you guys see this for those that might be new. Basically, I have the dot, and of course it's not gonna focus on the dot, but even if the dot were to go out, I can still see my iron sights, and that is critical for someone running a dot because I've seen so many dots go so out. It's just one of those things Make sure if you're carrying it for self-defense, you do have your backup irons to go to. Let's go ahead and get this thing on paper. All right, so we're right at 20 yards. Guys, anytime you're shooting a handgun, for those that watch my long range stuff, you know, a lot of times I won't wear eye protection or I won't wear ears if I'm shooting suppressed. That's different when you have an optic in front of you. It's kind of an accepted practice. Even a lot of competitions, if you have glass in front of your eye, they don't require it for safety. But for pistol, it's a whole different animal, okay? So definitely wear your eye and ear protection anytime you're shooting a pistol or a, or a handgun. And what we're gonna do is I'm right here at about 20 yards. 
and nothing crazy. I have a camera going down range. I'm just going to shoot center mass. Uh, let's see if the dot is actually uh, somewhat zeroed. I just mounted it up just to see what I could get. I'll tell you what, we'll do headshots and see where it's at on the head. Little center right in the head. So yeah, I pulled two low left. I think she's favoring a little left for me. If I shot on the plate, it'd probably be a little left. But man, this thing shoots well. I'll uh, go over here to the plates. Let's see, I've got a few rounds left. All right, so. Uh, yep. Stand by. Beep. I love the beeper. Man, no misses. And like I said, there's no special barrel in this. This is actually a factory Glock barrel, but shoots good, feels well. It's not moving around in my hand because of the stippling, but it's really, I mean, it's a good pistol. Like I said, I don't normally review Glocks. Uh, I don't review Gucci Glocks or anything like that, but uh, like I said, it was a gift. I wanted to shoot it, but that was a good run, first run. Uh, let's go up closer to the paper because I want to talk about some things about self-defense. All right, guys, so 20 yards on a headshot is not really justifiable, all right? This was just something just to get it on the paper here. I got Rick over there making faces at me. But I have had a lot of requests about self-defense considerations, carrying a pistol. Now, it's up to you to practice, to be proficient with your firearm, whether you're carrying appendix or if you're carrying open carrier at 4 o'clock. It's up to you. I do not like cross draw or shoulder holsters, okay? Uh, the reason for that is you're gonna probably muzzle your arm unless you're gonna do this and come down with it. You're gonna muzzle your arm, you're gonna muzzle yourself. Uh, and cross draw, there's a tendency to do that as well. There's really no advantage to it. I don't know why you would do that unless you just had a bunch of other stuff over here and even then I can't justify it. But one of the things about it is practicing and being prof proficient. However, if you get engaged or involved with something up close, which typically they're going to be up close, they're not going to be 40, 50 yards, it's not where you're going to have time to aim, okay? Now, this is, realistically, this is the same height and everything that I'm at on this grade, so I, I try to have it equal. I never had to try to have full-size targets that are this high and their heads this high, unless you're shooting at short, shorter people and I don't have it up too high, okay? Just realistic, something about six foot tall, okay? So from here, I don't need to worry about aiming. All I'm trying to do is get rounds on target, get me some distance. So one of the things that you can do, and there's a lot of instructors that teach this, take, take it for what you will. Uh, there is a method where you don't wanna take your pistol and do this, because now I'm within arm's reach of this person. Why would I want to give them a pistol that they could possibly disarm me and take it and use it against me? So on something close like this, there is a technique that you can use. Uh, this is an older technique, but it works really well. Typically, you wanna keep whatever side you're going on away from the adversary, okay? So keep your gun side away from whoever you're talking to. If this guy's being mouthy to you or whatever, uh, and you're not wanting any trouble, no any issue, or anything like that. However, you cannot pull a pistol because he's threatening you with fists, okay? Unless the guy's, you know, 350 pounds and is just a monster and you're, you know, 80 pounds soaking wet, it's gonna be really hard to articulate why you use deadly force against someone that had fists, okay? So with that being said, let's say this guy pulls a knife, which that is deadly force, okay? He pulls a handgun, something like that. Your object is to get rounds on that target and gain distance, okay? I'm not saying you take off running, but instead of presenting him with the firearm, you have to think about it. And if you practice this, guys, what you wanna think about is where your hand is, okay? Where your support hand is, or your weak side hand. You know, they used to teach pushing the, thing, the person away and then firing, but that's a recipe for disaster, okay? You're probably gonna shoot yourself in the hand, especially because you're not aiming. But here, there's a couple of different things you can do. One, is step back and engage, okay? That gains a little bit of distance, but the pistol really never changes location. You see that? As you're stepping back, you fire. So once again, it's step back, fire. Okay, that's actually through the exact same hole as the first one. 
I'm not even getting a sight picture. I am just pressing, and as I'm pressing, I'm firing. Now, if you get in a little close, there's another technique you can do, and that's just keep your hand up against your body. Okay, I'm trying not to hit my mic. But it can be out, but if you're gonna do this, practice dry firing a couple times. It is very important, I can't stress this enough, how important it is to keep that support hand, sorry, support hand close to your body. Because what you're gonna do is you just do this, fire, okay? And you're like, well, you could have just stepped back. Well, if you're engaged up close, I can get them center mass and I can still retract, but I did not put this hand forward of this muzzle. At no point was my body in front of that muzzle. Some pointers and tips. So remember, gun side away from the adversary. Support hand goes into the body. If you have to keep it up, keep it way up, okay? Another technique, some people do an elbow like this. That way if someone's coming in, they're gonna come into an elbow, but I don't even want you doing that. If you're watching this video, like I said, this is something you do on your own. I'm just trying to share the information. You can step back and fire while stepping, gets that distance, and they're all good center mass shots. The other one is support hand up close, you're basically rolling it. Now guys, you have to roll it this way. If you have a jacket on and you hold it like this from the hip, you can cause a malfunction with a semi-automatic pistol. So it is very important to roll fire. Those are all gonna be center mass in the area, but you have to keep this pistol or your support hand close, okay? So you're just rocking it. Now try to support with a wrist. That's gonna give you better options here because you have a solid point of contact. I actually use the top of the uh, Iliad crest here. Some people call it the pelvic girdle, and it's just a location for me to find it. And I can be pretty accurate with it. Even backing up, you know, some people call this trick shooting, whatever. It's not trick shooting. It's just practicing what it is you're carrying because everything's going to be different. If you're, carry, if you're carrying, let's say, uh, a Ruger LCP or you're carrying a revolver, it's all going to be different. We're going to step back. We're going to see if we can hit some of these steels just by coming off from the wrist without aiming. All right, guys, so this is not something to practice unless you've really practiced up close a lot. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw it at 15 yards or at, uh, I'm going to draw it at 10 yards and I'm just going to roll it on the plate. Now you should aim at this distance, but I'm just showing that once you practice it, you can be pretty effective at hitting targets. Okay, so that one's right here, low center. And all I'm doing is I'm just finding that spot right here, and I should be able to hit the target. There it is again, low. This is not something that you need to just shoot all the time like this, but if you're up close, three to five yards, it's not a bad thing to practice, and that'll give you time to get that pistol up. You're just trying to get rounds on target. Hopefully this helps. I know it was very, very long-winded. You guys always have to remember the four cardinal rules of safe gun handling. Never put your finger on the trigger until you're ready to shoot. Know your target, foreground and background. What that means is not only your target, but what's also behind it. You also don't want to aim at anything you do not wish to destroy. And then the fourth one is you treat every firearm as if it's loaded. If you keep those things in mind, you should be okay. But just remember, and, and a lot, guys, a lot of times, when we're filming these videos, it'll look like I'm muzzling myself like this. This is not even near me. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and touch on that topic right now because camera angles really change things because you're seeing it two-dimensionally, uh, but you'll never see any like this. It might be, it looks like I'm muzzling my hand. Well, I'm about 15 inches away from my hand, okay? So that's just one of those things to keep in mind. Hopefully you enjoyed this quick review of the pistol more of long-term stuff on defensive things. Boris, that was for you. Wayne, thank you very much for the pistol. Golf ball. Thing does shoot very nice. I gotta go up, we have full sun behind us now. My dot washed out. I am out, it is time to unass the area. All right guys, so here's Rick. This is how big this steel is. I mean, it's actually pretty small. 
not, not large at all. What we'll do is we'll try take that Wayne Hammer pistol and we will try to hit this at like 50 yards and 100 yards. All right guys, so we just came from up top. We hung the steel real quickly. I'm at 50 yards. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this Wayne Hammer pistol and what I'll do is I'll try to hit that little steel at 50 and then we'll go back to 100 yards. There's one, there's two, there's three. I think that's good enough. Let's go on back to 100. Let's just say you're driving along and in your car you have your pistol and you have no windshield, you're just driving your dune buggy and you have a pistol on your side. If deadly force, something starts to happen, you need to draw that pistol. Remember, you don't wanna muzzle your legs, okay? You have arteries for morals, you don't want to hit that. So you draw, it's up and over and out the window, okay? When you reholster, it's the same thing. It's up and around. But we have a target down there at 100 yards. You think I can hit it, Rick? Of course you can hit it. All right, here we go, 100. Oh, there it is. What do you think about that? Again? I want to jinx that one. Just a left. Just a hair left. I jinxed it though. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that video and that review of the pistol that was given to me by Wayne Hammer. I do really appreciate it. Uh, it means a lot. Big gesture. Thanks a lot. You guys have a great week. We'll talk to you soon. Have a good one. Like, share, and subscribe. That too. Too easy.